Hello, in this video we'll be uh, calculating variance inflation factors, a statistic that helps us measure how much collinearity is going on in our multiple regression analysis. Collinearity, as you recall, it means that the x variables are related to each other. So we don't like that because it means our, we are not able to effectively assess the impact each variable has on the response. So although collinearity is something we don't like, it, uh, it's okay in terms of prediction. It won't affect the, our predictive capabilities, but it does affect our interpretation of the regression coefficients. So let's run a regression first. Go data, data analysis, regression. Pulse is my response. And incline and speed are predictors. Labels in the first row. Output range in a new worksheet. And I don't want to do anything with residuals this time. Press OK. Here's our output created in sheet number four here. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. Again, I like to stretch out this first column to four decimal places. Let's get rid of these confidence intervals, the duplicate part anyway. Format all of this to three decimal places. Actually, for the ANOVA table, let's format that to one decimal place and have a comma separator. And then, I, again, I could uh, clean up some of the labels so they're not so large and therefore my output is not taking up so much space. Here's the p-value for the overall f-test. So we do have a significant regression. Now, I'm going to suggest here that we actually get rid of these confidence intervals too, because we could reproduce them fairly easily with just knowing, these standard error, knowing the coefficient standard error and by looking up a t-value, not the t-stat, but if we looked up the 97.5th percentile from a T distribution with 27 degrees of freedom, we could re uh, get these confidence intervals. So let's uh, get rid of that too. What I like to do is create a couple of extra columns here right next to the P values for the individual T tests on the variables and the intercept. And But this will be a column of variance inflation factors and this will be a column of standard deviations. Okay, so I'm going to get two standard deviations and paste them right there, one for incline and one for speed. And then, over, over in sheet two here, I have the variance inflation factor formula. And I want to use that and to calculate these variance inflation factors. Okay, so let's go back to sheet one, though and I'm going to find descriptive stats on these three variables. And ordinarily, that would have been done well before you're doing multiple regression analysis. Go data, data analysis, descriptive stats, press OK. Let's highlight all three of these variables. Labels in the first row, output in a new worksheet, summary statistics, press OK. OK, there we go. And uh, we've got way too much stuff here. Let's move all these variable names over one. And I can delete column C and E. Let's delete all these extra rows. And then uh, this is my statistic column. And then let's format uh, these cells to like one decimal place. There we go. And I'll stretch out this a little bit, but let's uh, abbreviate standard deviation. Okay, so I have a table of descriptive stats here. And I want these two, no, these two standard deviations. Now internally you can see there's much more accuracy shown. So this is not rounded to one decimal place, it's only formatted to one decimal place. Now copy these two standard deviations, go to sh back to sheet four. And let's paste them right here, but down. I want to paste them transposed. So right click, paste special, transpose, press OK. There we go. Um, now I'm going to use the formula over to the side here. So I say equal standard deviation, but square it, times sample size minus 1. That's right here in the ANOVA table 
times standard error of the slope coefficient squared. There we go. And all of that, oh, got to square it. All of that divided by s squared. Well, that's here's s squared in the ANOVA table, mean square residual. Enter. Okay, let's format this to a few more decimal places. Notice it's one to a lot of decimal places. This is not a surprise. Now I know the variance inflation factor for speed must also be one because there was only two variables in my model. When that's the case, no matter, they always have to have the same variance inflation factor. Okay, now I'm going to copy, I want to copy this formula down, but it won't work because I need to lock in some cell references first. So the B14, click next to the B, hit the F4 key, and also D13, click next to the D, hit the F4 key. The cell is locked into place. There we go. And now um, I'm going to copy over these two numbers. Control C, paste special values. Now the formula is gone. I can safely delete this last column and nothing happens to my uh, variance inflation factors. Okay, let's uh, make the bottom border dark. Let's format this to one decimal place. Again, this is another statistic that can be affected by unusual points. We could have collinearity inducing points or collinearity in dampening points depending on what's going on with the scatter plot between x1 and x2. Okay, but clearly there's no collinearity going on. x1 and x2 are uncorrelated, and uh, that's not surprising because that's how I created these variables. I chose their values so that there would be no relationship between x1 and x2. Let me just quickly make a scatter plot. And if we clean this up, there would be no relationship, uh, a little bit hard to see, but... Now variance inflation factors work best for um, situations where you have more than two variables. Still cleaning this up just to verify that and if I add axis label, well, clearly you can see there's no correlation whatsoever between speed and incline. And therefore, the VIF must be 1. In fact, we could use the other formula for variance inflation factors. If I go back to uh, sheet 5, sheet 4 here, there's another formula, insert object VIF for the jth variable, the jth explanatory variable is also equal to um, 1 over 1 minus r squared sub, uh, sub j. Okay, so this is another formula which would work in this case because we know that the correlation between x1 and x2, incline and speed, is 0. Therefore, if I were to regress x1 onto x2 or vice versa, I would end up with an r squared of 0. So correlation coefficient squared between the two variables is r squared, and that would be 0. So the VIFs are 1 for both. Okay, so since this was a designed experiment, I was able to control the values of the x's and make sure they're uncorrelated, so I'm not artificially inflating my standard errors here. Now with observational data, we'll almost always have some collinearity going on. That's it for this video.